Okay, good afternoon, students. Today's topic is that we're going to do is the uh, software development model called spiral model. Uh, in this, we will discuss how we can uh, develop a model by making uh, one, two, three, four number of n number of spirals to develop a software. So you can see in the diagram, uh, there are one, two, three, uh, four spirals are there. Uh, after for a uh, completion of four spirals, my software is ready. So uh, the cost of the software is directly proportional to the number of spirals over there. Uh, if there are less number of spirals, the cost of drifting will be less. If the number of spirals are more, the cost of drifting definitely will be more. So there are four quadrants over there, one, two, three, and four. So let, this we will discuss in next slides. So what is the spiral model is, as the name suggests, the activity in this model can be organized like a spiral or you can see as a circle. The spiral has many cycles. So you can see over here, cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, and cycle four. Uh, the radial dimension represents the cumulative cost incurred in accomplishing the steps uh, done uh, so far. And the angular dimension represents the progress made by the completion of each spiral. So you can see over here, uh, this uh, cumulative cost will tell us that the cost of development of the uh, project keep on increasing as we keep on increasing the number of cycles for developing the uh, software. So cumulative cost means totally depend upon number of cycles that we are, we are making over here to develop our software. Uh, the more the number of cycles will be there, the more number of spirals will be there, definitely uh, as per spec, our cost of development also increases and time also increases. Each cycle in the spiral begins with identification of objective for that cycle and the different alternatives are possible for achieving the objective and imposed constraints. So you can see over here in the first phase, we have, we have to determine our objectives of the software, first thing. Second, we have to mention that uh, what are different ways that I can use to develop my software. There might be more than one ways to develop the software. And what are the major constraints that I have used to develop the software? So it means that I have to mention that what are the various uh, alternative techniques that can be possible? What are the objectives of software? And what are the main uh, constraints that I'm going to impose for the development of the software? Uh, the next step in the spiral lifecycle model is to evaluate these different alternatives based on objective and constraint. So on the basis of the objective and constraint, I will choose one of the objectives. Uh, one of the alternative, in fact, on the basis of the objective and constraint, I will pick one of the alternative. If I am, let's say, I have to design a program to find the least number in an, in an array, so I can do it either by taking single loop or by taking dual loop. So it depends upon me. So if my constraint is that use a single loop and least time, then I go for the single loop only. Or if I say, okay, take uh, more than one loop and uh, don't worry about the time, so I, I'll go for the a dual loop. So it means that uh, same program can be uh, done by two different ways. Similarly, to develop a software, there are more than one techniques or methods, or you can say alternatives I'm having to develop a software. So the next step is to develop the strategies that resolves the uncertainty and risk. Then I have to find what are the various risks that can be involved if I select a particular alternative to develop the software, I will highlight the risk that these risks are the, maybe uh, you can say uh, generated while developing the software. And uh, I discuss with my customer, my customer say, no problem, go for it. If, if he said, no, I'm not satisfied this, with the risk, can we go for some another uh, alternative? Then I go for some another alternative, pick second alternative, again, uh, set up some new objective constraint uh, and uh, you can say alternatives. And again, I can go for the evaluation of risk uh, and I discuss with the customer. The customer will tell me that, okay, fine, go ahead. Okay, this step may involve the activities such as benchmarking, uh, prototyping, uh, and the software will be developed by making the, by taking into mind that what are risk factors are. So in the second quadrant, I will discuss what are the various risk factors, what type of prototype will be developed over here, and uh, what, what benchmark I will put on by developing the software. So these all are done in the second phase. After second phase or quadrant, I move to the third quadrant. 
in third quarter i start developing software designing the software testing the software coding the software and <clears throat> Uh, in the last quadrant, uh, plan the next step that includes planning of the next prototype that comprises the requirement and plan of the uh, test of the cycle. Okay. And the important feature for this model is that each cycle or spiral is completed by review, which covers all the product development during the cycle, including plan the next cycle. And the spiral model works for, for development of the enhancement of the project. Usually, uh, whenever uh, this question arise in your question paper that uh, draw a spiral model, uh, or you can say using spiral model develop, uh, develop a software using the SDLC software development life cycle. So usually some of the students make such type of spiral that starts from the center of it. If you mark it center of it, you will be unable to know from which quadrant it is starting. Fine. Okay, really the first type of mistake are being done by students whenever they design the spiral model in the answer sheet. Uh, never starts from the center of it and never end it over here. These two factors are important. It should be end over here and start a little bit on the left side of the center point. That is on the first quadrant. So this is how the accurate designing of the spiral model, as you can see, is not started from the center. We start from a little bit left side of center in the first quadrant. So it is clearly defined that my model is being get started from the first quadrant, then move to second quadrant, then third quadrant, then fourth quadrant. It means one spiral is over, the second spiral start, third spiral start, and always end over here. Always end over here. Do not go for the above this line. Because this point shows that the customer has uh, checked, tested the uh, software and he or she has no problem in it and he do not want any uh, enhancement or improvement in the software so at this point the customer is satisfied with the software and i will uh, the uh, you can say the software developer uh, will impl implement the software in the market so in this way we can design the model fine okay Next is, so here in the uh, diagram, you can see in the PPT, you can see that there are four quadrants in the, uh, in this, your spiral model, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So in the first quadrant, uh, we always highlight the objectives of the software. We always uh, highlight the various alternative techniques that we can use to develop the software. And we have mentioned the, what are the major constraints on basis of which we will develop the software. Fine, the first constraint is this. Second constraint, we evaluate the alternatives and on the basis of whatever we will check it out, the evaluation will be done on the basis of the risk factors. And after finding the one among the alternatives, we start, uh, we will design a prototype that such type of software will be developed uh, when, uh, when we do complete our testing and coding and uh, after discussing with the you can say customer the customer is satisfied with the prototype then we start developing it then we must make a design of software then we make coding of software then we go for testing of software uh, once testing is being done we will ask our uh, customer to check uh, whether you are satisfied with your uh, with our development or not developed software or not so the the customer will check so you can see in the first puddle start from first quadrant and move to second quadrant then to third quadrant again move to fourth it means that uh, when we ask our customer are you satisfied with the software he will say no i am not satisfied i want some more changes so he he asked us to make some more improvement in it or make some addition to it we said okay fine so whatever the constraint that uh, the customer has given to us on the basis of that again we will determine some of new new objectives again we highlight the new alternatives again we mention what are the major constraints on the which we are going to design so again among that alternative we select any one of the alternative and uh, we highlight the risk factors what are the major risk factors that can be uh, generated or we can resolve 
and we we will show the prototype to the customer so such type of software we will develop the customer will be really happy with the prototype then we move to the next third quadrant again we make a designing coding testing and once testing is completed again we ask the customer are you satisfied with the uh, software or not again you can see the spiral move further it means that the customer is not satisfied with the uh, with the software I, he or she wants some more changes again we move to next third uh, spiral again start from first quadrant second quadrant third again not happy the customer is not happy then fourth quadrant uh, then it started again we start from first quadrant second and third and we are finished over end of the third it means when we ask the customer are you ready are you, uh, are you happy with the software he said yes i am happy and we ask for go for the acceptance testing he go for acceptance testing and accept the software and we launch the software in the market no need to go to the fourth quadrant over here because no more changes are being required by the customer side it means that to develop this software we have to go for four spirals and the cost of the software will keep on increasing as per the number of spirals are being generated during the software development fine this is how this spiral model works okay in the spiral model we can see there are four quadrants are over there that uh, uh, first quadrant determine the objective second we identify and resolve the uh, risk by highlight by highlighting the prototypes and uh, third quadrant we develop the software verify the software and check is there need to go to the next level and in fourth quadrant we plan whether we should go for the next phase or not so now we discuss in detail about all the quadrants so the quadrant first is that uh, we establish an understanding of the system by highlighting the objectives of the so software and that objective will be highlighted on the basis of the performance what uh, the performance that the software should give the result in least time and uh, functionality what are the various functions that are being performed by our software and uh, ability to commodity changes that our software should have the ability whenever we require some changes it can easily be done so these are main objectives of our software that uh, we can see that the software is good software because uh, its performance is very good short time period results we are we are getting functionality whatever function we are we want from software it's providing to us and uh, whenever the some change are being required by the customer it can easily be done by in our software so these are the main uh, objectives uh, the second is that uh, what are the various different uh, alternatives techniques that we can use to develop the software that uh, techniques can we, we can say that we can develop a software whose design is easy uh, we can uh, uh, design a software whose who have a high security and uh, we can design a software that can be easily modified whenever required so we have different alternative techniques through which we can design a software and after uh, highlighting the alternatives we investigate the constraint imposed on the alternatives so by implementing the constraints of the new technology that is being used on the alternative uh, the alternative that have the least cost of development uh, the alternative that give us the result as per schedule time uh, and that have the le least risk whichever the alternative that have the maximum number of constraints, we go for that alternate. So this all we work is being done in the first quadrant by highlighting the objectives, alternative and constraint on the basis of which we are going to develop the software. So after first uh, quadrant, we move to the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, the activity performed in this quadrant is to select an alternative. So among that alternative that we have discussed in the first quadrant, uh, so using the, all the constraint that we discussed in the first quadrant, that is the schedule, cost, technology, and risk factor, mm -hmm. we will select one of the alternative. And uh, uh, the focus here is to is on risk improvement. That if there is any risk that is being occurred during the development of the software by taking one particular alternative, how that risk can be reduced. 
or how we can improve that risk factor. Each alternative is investigated and a prototype is being designed. And uh, uh, the prototype is associated with the development of decisions. The decision like the we will uh, the software uh, designer will or you can say software programmer developer will design a prototype and uh, using that prototype the the customer will run its conditions on the prototype uh, by performing some simulation operations over there and uh, by highlighting some benchmarking uh, for example let's say i'm having a software uh, and uh, i'm having a prototype of a software in which i'm having a restaurant uh, uh, what will happen if my uh, if my restaurant have uh, uh, less than 100 orders what will happen if my restaurant have equal to 100 orders what will happen if my restaurant have more than 100 orders so i have three benchmarks one is less than 100 one is equal to 100 one is greater than 100 so i highlighted the benchmarks over here and uh, i will uh, uh, get ask the questions from the customers and or you can say some other software designers uh, who, or, and who will give them me the answer of all the questions and by collecting the answer of all the questions i will generate the question here and on the basis of the question years i will uh, analyze the data to resolve the risk factor that occurred during the, uh, the you can say simulation of the prototype so this will happen in the second quadrant. In the third quadrant, when the customer is happy with the prototype, he says, I'm happy with the, what are the, whatever the operational issues are, what are technical issues that we can easily go for it. Then we go for the designing and development of the software in the third quadrant. So the designing and development of third quadrant is totally on the basis of the waterfall model. Uh, whatever operations in sequence we have done that is in your remember in waterfall model we go for design then coding and testing same uh, method we are going to go over here that uh, first we go for the designing of software then we go for the development of software by making the coding of it uh, and uh, then we go for the uh, testing of the software uh, same approach is being used over here okay So after completion of the third soft, uh, third quadrant, the software developer will ask the customer, are you happy with the software that we have developed? So at the end of third quadrant, the customer will uh, check the, uh, the software and run the, all the conditions over there. If he's happy with the software, then we'll stop in third quadrant. Else we will move to the fourth quadrant and, we'll, and we'll, we will discuss uh, how we can remove the operation, operational issues or technical issues that are being uh, not satisfied by the, uh, you can say, software developer. So each cycle of the module concludes with the technical review that assesses the status, progress, majority, and merits of the software and uh, the development effort update. And we have to resolve the critical operational issues and technical issues over here. Uh, so in this in this uh, fourth phase, we will discuss all the matters with the customer and collecting data from the fourth uh, quadrant. Again, we move back to the first quadrant and uh, start developing the software again with new alternative, new objectives and new customers. So this is how this uh, whole spiral works over here in spiral model in software development.